You should watch this video if you are over 60 and concerned about your health. You should watch this video if you've heard about ECG on smartwatches but don't really understand it. You should watch this video if you find terminology like cardiac arrhythmia and atrial fibrillation confusing because I'm going to explain it in layman's terms. And you should definitely watch this video if you have atrial fibrillation, you go to try it on a smartwatch and the app tells you it won't work if you have atrial fibrillation. I'll explain that for you today as well. It's Ron Brown with Tech for Senior, where we help seniors understand technology and help them with their health. Today we're going to talk about ECG feature on a smartwatch. I'm a retired physician who looked after seniors for about 35 years. I retired before smartwatches were available, and when this ECG feature came along, I was so excited because I thought this is a big deal and I sure wish we had had it when I was practicing because it would have saved a lot of strokes. So let me explain today how this works and why this is so important if you are over the age of 60. This video is made to provide you with more information. If you have any personal health concerns, you should seek advice from your healthcare provider. I personally own a Pixel 6 phone. I have a Galaxy 4 and Fitbit Sense watch. These were purchased with my own money and in no way re represents any sponsorship from any organization. Because of this, we would sure appreciate it that like and subscribe. A lot of work goes into making these videos, so we would really appreciate that like and subscribe. Now, for those of you who have signed in because you have atrial fibrillation and you're wondering what you're going to do, I put a timestamp in the link and you can go right to the end of the video and I'll explain that. We sure appreciate you to watch the whole video, but if you're in a hurry, just click to the end and I'll explain how we can help you. <laughs> I'm just going to put a pause in the video for a moment. Uh, I recorded this session earlier this year and since that time, I've updated my hardware. I have a Pixel 8 Pro and a Fitbit Charge 6 for my watch. Now the reason I want to mention it now is, is because the Fitbit Charge 6 is an excellent choice if you want cardiac monitoring. It has all the advanced features on it that the three times the price Pixel watch has. So this is a great buy. The usual price is $149 for the Fitbit Charge 6. Now we are moving into Black Friday and Christmas sales. So this watch, the Fitbit Charge 6, often goes on sale for $99. Yes, $50 off. So you'll be able to get the Fitbit Charge 6 with all the advanced monitoring that the Pixel Watch has for $99. It is a great deal. Now, if you're in Canada, uh, this watch now is about $210 and likely will go on sale for around $150 Canadian. Excellent value. It does all the irregular heart rate notification and all the things I talk about in this video. Let's get back to the video now. So the four watches that had the ECG FDA approved feature are of course the Apple Watch, the Fitbit Watch, the Galaxy Watch series from Samsung, from the Galaxy 4 Watch and up, and of course Google's new Pixel Watch. Please don't buy watches from cheap imports. It's not worth your health. So part of these uh, two large studies, the Fitbit and the Apple study that was done, was not just on the ECG app, but it was on the next feature that came out, and that's called a regular heart rate notification. And what happens here, and the watch monitors your heart rate in the background, and will tell you if you have a bout of atrial fibrillation. Wow, this is a big game changer, because no longer do you actually have to put your finger on the watch and do an ECG, it's going to passively monitor as you're going around your daily activity looking for atrial fibrillation. This was a huge feature that came out. And of course, Apple had it first. 
So they initiated the irregular heart rate notification into their software, and it's available today. It's easy to turn on in the app. Now, uh, Fitbit followed suit with this, and the great thing about Fitbit was, was this feature had been available in a lot of their models, a lot of their older models, the Fitbit um, uh, Versa and some of the older, older machines that they had, it worked. It was the sensors were all in the watches. So if you have an older device, just make sure your the Fitbit app is updated on your phone and see if you can turn it on. It's most likely you can. So this is called a regular heart rate notification. So when you, because all these devices are linked to, from your phone to your watch, the app sits on your phone. So when you go to initiate the irregular heart rate notification on your phone, the first thing it's going to say, are you 19 or above in age? So why would this be? Well, none of the clinical trials were done with people under the age of 19, so we have no idea if it works. Also, children have much smaller risks on them. The size is different, so the technology may not work. We just don't know. That's why the exclusion from age 19 or below. The second part is, it says, do you have atrial fibrillation? Remember those people at the beginning of the, the video I said, go right to the end? Well, this is exactly the problem, is if you have atrial fibrillation, you're excluded from using this app. Now, why is that so? Well, I haven't been totally honest with you here in that the irregular heart rate notification doesn't completely monitor your heart all the time. Remember when you were doing the, that ECG with your two fingers on, the, on, your, on your watch? Well, you had to sit back and be quiet while you were doing that. The sensors on these watches have trouble picking up atrial fibrillation when you're moving and you're moving around. So they really want to do the testing when you're at rest. And when is the, are you at rest the most? That's when you're sleeping. And that's why all these devices need to be worn when you're sleeping. So when I say that irregular heart rate notification monitors you, it does, but it monitors you periodically when you're at rest, not continually. So if you had atrial fibrillation and we wanted to know how many times a day you were in atrial fibrillation and things like that, it wouldn't measure that because it's not continuously monitoring it. So if you're under the age of 19 or you do have atrial fibrillation, then you won't be using this technology. And I'm going to explain next what is available for you. So it was 2015 when Apple brought in their first smartwatch. They then released the ECG app in 2018 with their Apple Watch 4. Now, the technology on the ECG app had been available for some time before the Apple Watch, and that was developed by a company called Cardia Mobile. And they partnered with Apple for the first ECG app on a smartwatch. This was very popular. And Apple announced that it was now theirs. There was a big court battle and the big guys won as to be expected. And of course the rest is history. So what is the value of the ECG app? All the things that we're gonna talk about regarding the ECG app, a regular heart rate notification, all the cardiac features on a smartwatch are available only for one purpose and one purpose only. And that's to identify folks who don't know they have atrial fibrillation. The, no, the ECG feature is not going to tell you if you're having a heart attack. It's not going to call an ambulance. It doesn't do anything like the ECG that we have in the hospital. It only has one specific purpose, and that's to find those folks that have atrial fibrillation and a higher risk of stroke and get them help. And that's basically what it is. So let me explain why that's so important. So if you read the literature from the watch companies, they talk about a cardiac arrhythmia 
and atrial fibrillation. What the heck does that mean? So a cardiac arrhythmia is simply an irregular heartbeat. And there are many different types of cardiac arrhythmias. Atrial fibrillation is a specific type of cardiac arrhythmia. And that is what we're looking for and want to treat it because it's common and a major side effect is stroke. So we want to find those folks and get them treatment. Now the other terminology they used is ECG and EKG. This can be confusing. They are exactly the same thing. ECG is the same as EKG. Now if you look at the graph behind me, you will see the incidence of atrial fibrillation after the age of 60. And you'll be shocked when you see that it goes up not linearly, but it goes up exponentially. And that means as we get older, the chances of you getting atrial fibrillation is extremely high, particularly in your 70s and 80s. In fact, if you get to 80, there is a big chance that you will have episodes of atrial fibrillation. So what's the big deal about that? Why is that so bad? Well, one of the big side effects of atrial fibrillation is stroke. And people often don't know they have atrial fibrillation. It causes a stroke. So if we could figure out who those people are, we can get them help and prevent it. I thought back on my own practice and all those people I saw with terrible strokes, and I could have prevented it if I knew they had atrial fibrillation before they came in. But we just didn't have this amazing feature back when I was practicing medicine. And that's why I believe with the bottom of my heart, everybody over the age of 60 should be wearing one of these devices we'll talk about today to prevent this very dis disabling condition. So what the ECG app does is it actually will tell you if you have atrial fibrillation. You may feel some fluttering in your chest. You may feel some palpitations. And you do the ECG app on your watch. And the ECG app analyzes this and says you do or do not have atrial fibrillation. Now, of course, what you're going to say, Ron, if you don't have any symptoms, why would you do the ECG? And that was part of the problem with the initial ECG app because you actually had to have some symptoms. You actually had to sit down, rest, and actually put your finger on the watch and do an ECG. Now, a regular heart rate notification just got better. You know who? Yes, Apple did it. They have improved the sensitivity of the sensors and software in their watches. And now, don't just do random assessment, it's continuous monitoring. Yes, continuous monitoring, looking for atrial fibrillation. What does that mean? It means you folks who have atrial fibrillation can now use the Apple Watch. And there's a feature on the Apple Watch called atrial fibrillation history. You can enroll in that, you have to have atrial fibrillation, and now it's going to track and tell how long you were in atrial fibrillation, how many periods of atrial, atrial fibrillation you have in a day, and what are some of the aggravating and relieving factors. All this information is not so important to you, but has big is a big help for your healthcare provider in trying to determine what tri type of treatment that you need or how the treatment is working. So this is a very big deal for you folks who have atrial fibrillation, and this is only available on the Apple Watch. It's called Atrial Fibrillation History, and it is easy to turn on in the Apple Health app. Now, if you, are, if you don't have atrial fibrillation, then you're just going to turn on the irregular heart rate notification in the Health app. So in summary, this is, I think, life-saving. We can help all those folks who are going to get atrial fibrillation because we can pick these up earlier and get them help. It's done by using the ECG app on your watch. We now have irregular heart rate notification where it's going to monitor your heart. And if you do have periods of atrial fibrillation, it's going to pick it up and say, hey, get some help. 
And for those folks who do have atrial fibrillation, as long as you have an Apple product, you can now monitor your atrial fibrillation and see how the medication and treatment is working. It's Ron Brown with Tech for Senior. Hopefully you've enjoyed watching this video. We'd sure appreciate that like and subscribe. And until we see you again, have a great day. And wear your watch. Don't forget to wear your watch. Bye now.